Hello, I wanted to spend a little bit of time going over problems one and two, at least parts of them, uh, that we did in class yesterday, um, just so you can see how I think about these problems, which I think will help uh, as you're working on problems that uh, are due in class tomorrow. So the two that I wanted to, to take a look at are the ones right here. Uh, and again, these are on the class problem sheet uh, from yesterday in class. And let's get started with the first one, which is just to predict the products problem. So we'll predict the products and then we'll work through the mechanism uh, to make sure it's clear how we get those products. Uh, again, I want you to be able to do these problems quickly uh, and I want you to be able to uh, do them in multiple ways. Meaning, for this one, it's really important to be able to just predict the products um, and then it's also important to draw a mechanism to show how those products are formed. So the first thing I would do for this one um, is to number the carbons in the starting material so that I don't lose any carbons along the way. So then I would think about, all right, what is phenyllithium going to do in this? And a lot of people have asked me, you know, which order do you do reactions in? And it really doesn't matter. Uh, you can pick whichever carbonyl you want to to react with first and then the other one to react with second, right? The key is that we need to know that phenyllithium is going to react with both a carboxylic acid and an ester. Um, so it's not like it's only going to react with one because it's reactive with both of them, right? So uh, when we think about this, Right, if we're just going to first predict the products, uh, I want us to be able to look at this and say, I know the phenylethium is going to react with an ester by first a substitution, then an addition mechanism. So we're going to substitute, lose a good leaving group, and then add so that we're going to end up with carbons one and two turning into an alcohol after we add uh, acid. And we will have added two of the benzene groups to it. So again, that's carbon one and two. All right, and when we think about this, when we think about the way an ester reacts, we're gonna end up breaking that bond because that's gonna be an O minus good leaving group, all right? Um, so that's gonna be one piece. And then as we think about the rest of that piece, right, we're gonna have an alcohol, and that's gonna be carbon three, four, and five. And the question is what happens to carbon 5? And if we remember what happens when you have a carboxylic acid, um, the phenylethium is first going to deprotonate it to give you a carboxylate anion. Carboxylate anion is still reactive with phenylethium. It's going to add again and it ends up generating a ketone. Right? That's the only way we know how to make a ketone. So it's very helpful if we can very quickly do that to say, look, I know Phenylithium is going to react with those two functional groups to give me these two molecules, right? Then it's also useful to be able to work through a mechanism. So let's work through that mechanism. Um, and let's start by reacting the ester, right? So if we have phenylithium, and again, remember, it's carbon minus. So if you want to write it out as just phenyl minus or draw out the benzene ring and put a negative charge on one of the carbons, any of that is fine, right? That's going to react with the carbonyl carbon on the ester. We have a good leaving group on the ester, so we're going to reform the carbonyl. Right? And so that's going to give us a ketone. And it's going to give us another piece which is the good leaving group side of the ester, which now contains a carboxylic acid, and we'll react that in just a minute, right? We have a ketone. Ketones are reactive with alkyl lithiums, so that's going to react again. All right, and we get to a stable tetrahedral intermediate, right? So that's as far as that piece can react. All right, now we can look at the other side, and again, Remember, 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 carboxylic acids are acids. Grignard organolithium hydride reagents are bases, so they're going to grab that proton, right? That's going to produce benzene and a carboxylate anion. And again, carboxylate anions are reactive with phenylithium.
So we get to that point, and again, we have a stable tetrahedral intermediate. Everything's stable at this point. Now we add acid. Right, so we add acid to this one. It's very straightforward. It's going to pick up a proton and give you that tertiary alcohol. This one, it's a little bit less straightforward. Right, you're going to add, I'm just going to write H plus to simplify. You're going to add H plus to all three of the O minus groups. And it looks like we should get that triol. Right? But as we've said several times already, and as we'll talk about in class tomorrow, uh, this molecule, which is called a hydrate, isn't stable. Right? When you have two OHs on the same carbon and two carbon groups, that very quickly turns into a ketone plus water. Right? So this molecule is going to lose water, and we're going to generate a ketone. Right? And so the two things we'll talk about tomorrow is one, what happens in that mechanism, right? That's a useful thing for you to try and dry out. And then two, why doesn't this ketone react with phenylithium? Every other time we've formed a ketone, we've reacted it with phenylithium. Uh, so those are the two things we'll talk about tomorrow. But anyway, we can definitely go through this mechanism um, and see how the ester reacts by substitution and then addition, how the carboxylate anion reacts by deprotonation, then addition, then protonation, right? Let's look at this synthesis problem, right? And the problem says, uh, propose two different carbonyl starting materials and corresponding green area reagents for each compound, right? So we're going to have to make this two different ways, right? And, and I hope that we're getting better at looking at molecules like this, identifying very quickly that this is a secondary alcohol, right? And then saying if it's a secondary alcohol, we know that the starred carbon started as a carbonyl, right? And if we look at the two carbons next to the starred carbons, let's call those the alpha carbons, that's the standard way that we talk about it, that the alpha carbons could have started as C minus, right? And again, C minus we mean in this problem C M G X. Right? So either of these carbons could have been the nucleophile when we're thinking about how to make this. So the two bonds that we should be focused on are the bond on the left and the bond on the right. Right? And that's where we should focus our energy. And so when we think about this, Again, it's useful to start thinking backwards. So if we think about the red arrow or the green arrow, we can focus on those two different bonds that we're going to form, right? And so if we're going to form the bond in red, right, we're saying that the alpha carbon to the left was the nucleophile because we know the starred carbon is going to be the carbonyl. That was the electrophile, right? So, and again, there's a hydrogen on here. So when we think about breaking that bond, right, one way to think about it in the backward direction is that we're going to start with that as a carbonyl, and then the electrons over here go on to that carbon, right? So what does that look like in terms of an actual molecule? It looks like we have a Grignard reagent, again that alpha carbon is now our carbon minus, right? And then we have to make sure that we have the right number of carbons, right? So one, two, three, four. Right? One, two, three, and four. And there's our aldehyde starting material, all right? And we can make this a bromine. So we'd like to do that, right? And so if this goes in the forward direction, we form that red bond, right? And I know in your homework, it says to start with, you know, a bromide, right? So if we were going to start with the bromide, we would start with that bromide, and there's our aldehyde, right? And then if we were going to go in the forward direction, we would just add magnesium, and then that would get us to make the bond that we want, right? If we think about going in the other direction, 
breaking the 4-3 bond, that would just mean we would have the aldehyde directly attached to the benzene ring, right? And then on carbon 3, our other alpha carbon, 2, 3, that would be our Grignard reagent, right? Again, 2, 3, 4, making the 3-4 bond as you think about going in the forward direction. And if we wanted to get back to a bromide, there's the bromide that we would start with. Again, in the forward direction, we would just add magnesium. Okay? So again, I hope that this idea of thinking about things in reverse is helpful. As problems get more complicated, it's going to be more important to think about things retrosynthetically, right? And really think about what bonds can I form, recognizing that the alcohol in the product always comes from the carbonyl in the starting material, uh, and then that the two alpha carbons, um, or if it were a tertiary alcohol, the three alpha carbons could start as your carbon nucleophile.